I think it was the one before that where I talked about the vise that I designed and built and actually finished the plans on. And it was supposed to be released last weekend. And I want to go into the reasons why, why it didn't get released, okay? Because I had this idea a long time ago, and I prototyped, I kind of prototyped the idea, and then I came up with a different, a slightly different twist on it. it was the nuts that are offset, half nut type approach. And so I built a mock-up, and I talked about that in another video. And I actually showed the mock-up in, in yet another video. So anyway, so that's a good concept. I'm not going to say that that's not a good concept. And it was a good enough concept, certainly, for me to start building on. And I did that. And I held it up in that video. And I said it was great. <laughs> and it was. It was great. Up until it broke. <laughs> and uh, the reason why it broke is because, how do I put this? I'm putting limits on, like I'm putting limits on what I'm allowing myself to do within these projects to make them so that the average woodworker can get them done. And this was uh, probably the worst case of that in the, my history of building things here. The problem comes from how the nut, like each half of the half nut is held within the thing. It needs to be held very well. So I devised a method of having plywood blocks with two different size holes. The front hole is a half inch. The hole behind it was 13 sixteenths. And 13 sixteenths is a very close match to the outside, uh, say, diameter of a half inch hex nut. So it kind of nested in there. And I glued those in to each perspective one so that the nut is actually pressing up wood against wood, the half inch holes in the front. So it's pressing up against that, and it's glued in solidly into that 13 16 inch hole. Very good, right? Yes. Uh, the only problem is, okay, I had to leave a little bit of space for the rod to tilt up so I could move through that space. So that was a little bit of a compromise. But the major compromise was the whole concept of that being strong enough. It didn't, it didn't hold. Like I had concerns from the beginning when I was, and this is the reason why it took me like three weeks to get it done. Because usually when I have a really good idea, I bull through and I get it done and I don't have any doubts, and even subconsciously. And I think that's what happened in this case. I had some doubts subconsciously whether this is going to work because I kept questioning myself on this. Is that going to be strong enough? And I said, well, the only real way to find out is to give it a fair try and see if it actually works. So I kind of jumped the gun because that's part of the problem with doing this. I mean, if you're trying to stick with a reasonable release schedule for projects and videos, then, and you're doing this completely 100% on your own, I have no help at all whatsoever. I do everything, everything you see that comes from me, I do. I do all of it, so no help. And it doesn't leave you any time for failure. And that's what happened in this case. The, um, what happened was, when I held it up in that video, I said it was really strong. And I had just tested it, you know, a little bit. But what I did was I had all the footage, and I still have it on the computer here, from the build. And so I went out to film the last sequence, which would actually be the opening sequence of the video, where I'm using it. Like I made this um, nice thing that it swings up so that it's not in the way when I don't need it. I can swing it up and lock some place. And um, you do that, and then you quickly adjust it open to put the piece of work in. 
And so I did that and I tightened it up and I pounded on the block with the hammer and chisel to show how solid the damn thing was and everything was aces, it was all perfect. And then I adjusted it again so I put the block sideways so I could plane it. And when I tightened it up, I heard this crack. And this was the back nut, the one that's above, like this, breaking loose of the mount. And I said, this is it. This is it. This is, this is basically a month worth of work down the drain. Because I had the, like, the plans finished, man. I even put, had the metric dimensions in the plans and the cut diagram for the plywood. So, oh, such a, such a setback, right? But uh, I couldn't, like, I could have faked it. I could have said, no, the thing works. Because, okay, one of the things about plans, like plans for this probably wouldn't have sell, sold well anyway. And then a lot of the plans that you do sell, people don't actually build. This is just the reality of it, okay? It's not like I'm taking advantage. People like to buy plans. They like to think that they're going to build a plan. And some people do, don't get me wrong. But for the most part, people don't build a plan. They think that this is something that they need to get them started on the thing. And so they buy it and they look through it and they're all excited. And then, you know, they get up the next morning, they go to work or whatever, and it slowly fades from memory. And eventually maybe they'll get back to it, but a lot of them don't. So I could have faked it. I could have said that this thing works. And I could have said in the, like I could have changed the thing in the instruction. Because I used polyurethane construction adhesive to glue in the nut. I could have changed that to like slow set epoxy. You really need to use the strongest possible epoxy you can find. But at the end of the day, I think it still wouldn't have held up. And I don't have... Like, I, I cannot be that dishonest just to, just to put out a video. I, I can't do it. I have, I have to have reasonable belief in the project that it will succeed as designed, especially when I'm building a plan for it, like selling a plan for it. I don't, wanna, I don't want people to be ripped off. I don't want people to take the time to build this thing and then, you know, they put a piece of wood in there and the first time they tighten it up the damn nut comes loose or breaks loose in the back or in the front or both at the same time so where does that leave me it leaves me with a bunch of footage on my computer that i really can't use i could um i could save it and then make a change to the because immediately after that happened i came in and i sat down for a couple hours uh, working on the SketchUp model to come up with a way to fix that, to make it so that, that it couldn't break. And it involved, it involved actually um, either um, uh, using metal parts to mount the nut in so that it, it, like wood has give, that's the problem. When you're pulling on a nut like this and it's pressing against wood, that wood is going to give, and it doesn't have to give very much for the bond to break between the glue and the nut. So I was thinking I could back that up on the front with metal, and I could glue the nut into something that's stronger, maybe not metal, but maybe some kind of... Uh, I really need to make a better bond. The best bond, of course, possible is to weld it, to another piece of metal, but I didn't want to get into welding in a plan that I'm selling. So these are the limits that I put on myself when I do these kind of projects like this. I want to make it from um, commonly available material. I'm going to use commonly available methods, you know, that most any woodworker can do to, uh, regardless of your skill level. I mean, the possible, well, there are two possible exceptions to that. But the biggest exception to that is my gear link vise that would take a quite a lot of skill to get that thing built and have it work properly. Uh, so that's quite a challenge. That would be the exception though. Normally I, but it's still all made out of wood except for the commonly available hardware parts. Normally I make things that just about any woodworker can do 
that would be relatively challenging, but you can get it done. There's nothing like there's no complex joinery involved. There's no special parts that you have to go out and buy. Uh, there's no special, real special machines that you need. Like you basically can get it done with hand tools if you're so, so inclined. So what I may do is I may take the concept further and uh, make it from steel, make a um, make a, an all metal vice that would, and then, then this all metal vice would be very capable. And I mean, when you're making something out of metal and you're designing that way, you're, the expectation of course, is that you're dealing with people that can work with metal. So there's that. I think this is one of the reasons why my um, 2x72 belt grinder plans didn't sell very well. Like they still, I sell one every once in a while, but they're not like, they're not exactly flying off the shelf. Okay. They're not paying for my groceries here. That's for sure. And I live off this. Oh, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support the channel, and even if you don't want to build, like if you have no intention of building the plan, go ahead and buy one. People ask me, how do I donate? I don't like Patreon or I don't like doing this. Or, buy a plan, buy a plan. I mean, at least you're getting something in return for what you're giving. So, yeah, I think that's what uh, the downfall for the belt grinder was that I designed it for woodworkers when woodworkers are not going to be interested in building a belt grinder. So I should have, and I'm going to go back to this, I think, in some point in the future. I'm going to design and build a metal um, belt grinder. Okay, so I guess that's it. The uh, project that I made to, I can't say replace, but to get out this weekend so that I'll actually have a project because, you know, setbacks like that are big setbacks and they really throw off. I don't have a schedule per se, but mentally uh, it throws you off. So that project is, is quite a lot simpler. <laughs> But I think it has its own appeals. Uh, it's something that I had to do. Uh, so like a shop project almost, kind of. Well, it is a shop project, but uh, I think it'll do okay. It'll be on my main channel this weekend if I uh, get motivated to edit the video, which you're not seeing in the background there. That's yet another cooking video that'll be coming to this channel at some time. I recorded it like the same day that I made the bread. It's actually, I'm making sandwiches with that two buns that I made, the extra buns. So that's something for you uh, cooking enthusiasts to look forward to on this channel. I cannot solve your problem, sir. Only you can. Oh, fuck it. Oh, fuck it. Yes, that's your answer. That's your answer to everything. Your revolution is over, Mr. Lebowski. Condolences. The bomb's lost. My advice to you is to do what your parents did. Get a job, sir! <laughs>